Cecil. Cecil, madam, Cecil. 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 What? I found these dice down in the hotel lobby. I was wondering if they might be yours. What would I want with dice? I don't know. You gamble sometimes. Gambling, you say? Well, they aren't just used for gambling. Most people use them for tabletop games and such. Less interested. In fact, did you know you can get wonderful dice like this at MetallicDiceGames.com? Not really. And did you know that the Rancor's Brothel can help you get 10% off on your order? 10% off a brothel? No, no, no. 10% off your order at MetallicDiceGames.com, silly. And it's not really a brothel. Hmm. Countless email inquiries continue to suggest otherwise. Just use their code RBP10 at checkout and you can get 10% off your order. RBP10? That's right. RBP10 at checkout at MetallicDiceGames.com. Hmm. I'd rather have the brothel. Oh, you. Come on, we need to catch up with the others. Fine. By the way, did you ever find that mangy dog of yours? You know, I haven't yet. Oh, look, a taco stand. Warning, this podcast contains mature content, including scenes or descriptions of graphic violence, sexuality, and psychological trauma. Listener discretion is advised. The The Rancor's Brothel presents... Impossible Landscapes A Delta Green Campaign by Dennis Denweiler Okay, so you're heading to the Trevolino Mall. Yes, yep. with some and things to do on the way. Yep. Sure. Yes, you're going to take a look at that. I got that. What do you? So you're doing something with the phone and you're reading. Well, I think Lucas is driving. Lucas, right. is I have driving. to drive now. Yeah. Troy, are you doing anything <laughs> on the drive to Trevolino Mall? I'm gonna try the. Star 616 on our bag phone again. Uh, it rings twice. And then it uh, you hear a click as the phone picks up. Yes. Um, we need some help with the local police. They've got some uh, items confiscated from Marvis's house. Um, and, um, I think it would be helpful to us in our investigation. So if we could get those, uh, you know, set loose somehow, or please specify desired Intel objects. I have no idea. Some sort of machinery, something taken from the house. We don't know, but something was taken from Marbus's house that the police now possess that I think will help us in, in their in our investigation, we found some machinery in his house. So I'm assuming it's other pieces of machinery. I mean, that's what killed some fucking firefighters, we think. So, yeah. The police are not being uh, cooperative. So. Affirmative. <laughs> so should, I, should we head to the police in the morning or are they going to show up on our doorstep? <laughs> <laughs> We didn't know the power that guy this guy had before, so now, Does now the we voice have, actually sigh. Now we have or is questions. that just greedy? <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just rereading. I it's less it about voice. knowing things, and it's more about understanding motivations, because then you can tailor what the players are trying to do more effectively. So, what is what is the motivation of the various NPCs and forces at work? So, to me, I'm just kind of reading what Dale Wilder's written and going, okay, what is the motivation? Intel will be provided. Okay. Again, do we have to go collect it or is it going to come to us? Caution. Danger close. Be prepared. Click. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. Flynn, you can read the whole damn play. <laughs> right on. Um, and is are you good to make some calls on um, Whitworth's phone or would you like me to do that? Um, 
Yeah, it can make some calls. Uh, and I mean, the thing is, we'll probably get there a little bit early too. Yeah. Oh, that's true. So, that's true. I mean, if he, if if Inez is comfortable then doing it, then sure. But I would do the calls first, or at least know what's going on with the calls, so I know how to respond. What are we doing with the phone? Um. So I I would suggest um Ophelia Citri, yeah. who is Whitwer's fiance, uh, ask if she's had any contact from him. Um, if anyone else has reached out to her about him, do we want to use this phone to call her though? I mean, she might she probably pick up if it's she might be scared Whitworth's to pick up too. Phone, she might be scared to pick up too. Well, I mean, it's a 50 50 shot, I feel like at this point because if Whitworth's missing and she gets, well, a, I mean, it's worth a call, she gets a call from uh, well, yeah, but I mean, you can get her contact out of the phone and call on your normal that's phone. That's true. That's true. It's, how, it's, ever, it's however you want to do it. As you just... boot up the phone and kind of discuss this, um, the phone does not have any contacts in it. Son of a bitch. Does it have any missed calls, outgoing calls in the log? It does. It's got the DEA agent's number. He gave the number in the message. You do seem to find, like I said, you find some text messages and a voicemail. But in uh, otherwise, you don't find any contacts listed. You can see that some numbers have been called, but there's no data as to which numbers are which. Okay. So it would take a little bit of figuring out. Yeah, you, definitely you could probably match up the outgoing calls, incoming calls to the text messages. and. Um, I mean, also just Googling the area codes would give yeah. some of that yeah. information. Um, you get the sense that... The text messages and the majority of the calls on the phone went to a single number, which has a zip code for Nevada. What do the texts say? The first couple are very cordial. They're about maybe 15, 20 of them. The first couple text messages are very friendly. Hey, hope you have a good day. Kisses. That's probably Ophelia. Uh, they live in haven't, Las Vegas. Haven't heard from you in a while. Hope all is well. Call me tonight. Hey, why didn't you give me a call? What's going on? You know, um, Michael, some guys are asking about you. Are you okay? Please respond. And then they kind of trail off into that. So you get an evolution of what seems very playful, then very concerned, and then extremely concerned. What's all- the... Oh, go ahead. What's the timestamps? That would be... Um, ugh. I hate not having this information immediately available. And I don't want to say the wrong thing because you guys will write it down and roast me. Um, <laughs> which right, is, next right. I mean, right, right next to Boofus. Right next to Boofus. <laughs> the... Y'all know that if uh, Sam doesn't survive this, Flint's ca- next character's name will be Boofus. <laughs> That's his next DCC character. <laughs> oh, Boofus is going to be... Oh, yeah. I would say um, the first few messages are somewhere between, we'll say, June 30th and July 6th. The rest of the messages are after that time frame. Uh, the most frantic messages are probably July 8th and 9th, including one message saying, um, I called work. They don't know where you are. What are you doing? That is in the middle of the frantic messages. That one is specifically on July 9th. Of this past year? Of 2015. So this year. Current year. Right. Yes, correct. Um, wasn't the past, this- I wasn't sure what you meant by this past year, but wasn't, 2015. Wasn't the... T- wasn't that the time frame that Marbus was visiting the Institute? That was late May. I feel like we've got another date was, for... Was it late May? I thought it was... Well, I th- I, I, but I think it was later. I late think May, early dates. June. That was yeah. one set of dates. Wait, that was from session three. That might have been the... the... Barbus visited late June. That can't be right, because I have the. Black. I have him May 29th. Yeah, I've got visits. that too. I don't know what late June was for him. Uh, late June, be on leave. That's oh, when, that's uh, right. He's okay, put on leave. right. And the blackout was between the 27th and, and 8th. Yes. So yeah, so this would have been line. after any of that stuff. Um, you said that all of the text messages go to that number. Yes. 
Are there any sent messages? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, are there any other f- phone calls to a Nevada area code but that 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 are not that number? No. Um. Somebody have uh. Let me see something. Deacon. Mm-hmm. Uh, you kind of just as they're describing this while you're driving, it occurs to you one hundred percent that this is a burner phone. I say as such. And as part of a burner phone, you would delete your messages. His messages weren't deleted. Correct. Did he even get them? Is the question. Somebody got them. So, like, that's the thing is that even though even though this was you 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 wouldn't know without further research, but this is some junk ass phone you bought for sixty bucks. You probably paid for it in cash. You got a SIM card. You activated it. So this this may be something that's completely pointless, but when Flynn would have opened, or Sam, I should say, opened the phone and viewed the messages, because you viewed the text messages too at first, right? I think I could only do one. I think I chose to look at the voicemail. Yeah, he listened to the voicemail All right. before the phone died. So when Inez looked at the messages, you usually have some kind of notification as if they've been viewed or not. Not on this end. This is, I mean, this is an old phone. This is a garbage jank. I mean, even phone. in the old phones, I feel like you still had that. But how, I mean, like how, I said, if, if you it, say it's an old phone, like how old are we really talking? I sent you a picture of it. It's a shitty flip phone, probably with keypads, and it barely has It's like a, my first phone, which I got in like 20, I mean, 2004. we are in 2015, so it's probably a maybe early, teen, early, early like, 10s or... Again, from a tradecraft perspective, which which Deacon could definitely tell you, the whole goal is is you're buying a cheap ass phone yeah. that you can use for whatever you want. You pay it in cash; it should be untraceable. But even in 2015, there yeah, there would be flip. You could go buy a Go phone, and yeah, there'd be right. Ah. It could even be a track phone or something. Right, you know Sam, I mean? check the gallery. What? The gallery. It's a photo. There's a lens on that phone taking photos. Oh. Boop, boop. No photos have been taken with that phone. Snap me a quick dick pic. <laughs> hey, look at this! Send it to Olivia. Send to star oh. 616. <laughs> He's gonna be so Fat mad. Fat knuckle. I said Olivia, um, my Ophelia. <laughs> we, I know what you meant. <laughs> so, uh, anything else you want to do with the phone? Are there any calls to Boston area numbers? Negative. This phone probably doesn't even have service anymore. You probably got to use someone else's phone, anyways. No, I mean when you when you turn it on, it seems to function like it. Well, yeah, but a phone can still function, but it doesn't mean it's going to be able to call and text people. Not till you try it. Yeah, I know. Are there? What are the next like larger no like uh, number the, of calls that are that have been made with the phone. No, no, even even the calls have been deleted. Oh, so there's no Yeah, no, there's there's no data in that phone other than those text messages and the voicemail. Oh, okay. So essentially you've got two numbers. And they're different. Well, yes, one was from uh, both of them are both of them are Las Vegas area code. Cuz the other one was a snide internal investigations. Ruben Hardrick. I have an idea that I don't know if it's a bad idea or stupid. I don't think it's a good idea. All are welcome. So what if... What if we use this phone to call Winston and just didn't say anything, see how he reacts, see if he has this number, if he knows that we had this phone, see how he would respond to that? I like it. Sure. I'll get out his number on my phone. It's a good Dial way to find up. out if the phone has service. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll wait till Lucas gets down. <laughs> yeah, I got Just so he can hear Grady say nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're being clever. Trying to be, anyways. <laughs> trying. Yeah, this game feels so massive. Like, I, I keep trying to make connections between the, the little bits of information that we have and realizing half this shit probably haven't even touched what the actual thing is that it's referencing, if anything. 
who else to dig is like all this all this information's coming back to the king in yellow and carcosa which out of game could mean it's just all f-ing bullshit yeah but in game it's it's the connection you know it's the i dig it the numbers mason what did they mean do you want me to say now that lucas is here yeah <laughs> no now you gotta now you gotta wait for troy to come no, down you here wanted to wait on lucas that's why I, no, well, I and, then wait for and troy. then and then troy left no the deal was waiting on lucas what was the question i did a thing he was waiting for you to. He was waiting for you to come back so Cody could say nothing happens. <laughs> so I'm calling Winston from Whitworth's phone, but we're not going to say anything just to see how he just reacts. See if reaction. he has the number. Okay. And uh, gauge what kind of reaction he would have. Another thing is why would why did Marvis have a burner phone from that was Whitworth was using. <laughs> Also, was 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 uh we we was we were told we were told I mean we knew that this operation was India Moon right? Because we were, were India Moon. Yeah, but we 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 were told this when we met Marvis. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we are India Moon, and it's labeled as such. The other team was Operation Mercy. They were also Viso, which we don't. Sorry, they were also Viso, which we don't do anymore. Oh yeah. Souls are not a thing anymore. Delta Green has evolved. So now that Troy is back, can I say nothing has happened? Yes. So you pull out the burner phone. You take a look at Winston's number from your own cell phone. You punch it into the burner phone. You hit send. Um, There is no ringtone. You just hear... We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and try again. There's no service. <laughs> Yeah, if it's like a burner phone, then you'd have to buy minutes. Oh, okay. Can't you buy minutes like on a card? Right, we'd have to go buy a card. Let's do that. Is there a Walmart, CVS nearby? I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it's it's not like it's not like Massachusetts <laughs> is out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Right. I'm sure we can just get off off the interstate or whatever and pick one up and get back on the interstate yeah yeah you can you can we can can even go to a gas station and find them i mean they're everywhere Um, 2015 it occurs to someone apparently i'm gonna go with deacon because deacon has an applicable skill freaking deacon um you ought to be able to call a number and see if there are minutes on that phone from that phone yeah that's usually like star something typically but star Seven eight nine or something like that. I mean, those boop, those. Boop, boop. I think those old phones. I think there was automatically a contact too. You, you know, could call. But hello and thank you for using track phone. You know what I mean. And it actually, let me look and see because I think there is a name that is regional. Um, there are one hundred and seventy five minutes available for your phone. Message ends. Oh, it sounds like we have minutes. Um. I'm going to try to call my phone. Uh, when you- oh, well, that's at the police station. Um, can I have someone <laughs> else's they number? Our, they wouldn't have given our cell phones back? <laughs> no, they kept mine because they, I uh, recorded it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> trying to put it on yeah, World or, Star. You, you can call my phone. Okay, Colin Roderick. Uh, three tones. We're sorry. This number cannot be completed as dialed. When you go through the phone, can you find the phone number to itself on there? Typically, there's yeah. a way to do that. <laughs> Call that number and see if that phone rings. I'm going to call that phone's number. It rings. Answer it. Hello. Outgoing. You get that work. weird, odd. Okay. Yep. Stereo sounding noise. Um. So maybe it was only made for incoming. It's no outgoing. I thought it said somewhere what it was. Maybe not. Well, yeah, usually in that case, you'd be probably be able to receive calls, maybe, but we have to go by can't call out can you text out no probably not no hold on i want to make sure i didn't miss something because i was reading please rewind the last two minutes and tell me what you did okay he called the phone we found before that i called winston winston correct then i called i started to call my phone i'm like huh cops and pigs and then i called roderick's phone okay that was what i missed 
So let me walk that back. <laughs> because that's not what I heard while I was reading some other things. <laughs> when you call from the Citri phone. Yes. Roderick's number is what you're calling. Yes. The call connects. Can pick it up. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to answer to make sure you know it's coming through. Yes, you get the horrible stereophonic noise as you're All right. having a call in the same okay. car. Obviously, hang up before I start talking, in case it's bugged. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we have a guy at work who thinks all the work phones are bugged. It's funny. Jesus. I mean, he's probably right. Sometimes they like light up like when you're not even using them, and it's. Um, anyways, um, um, the it was uh the the phone system is so simple calling card. So it probably da 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 da. Hello, thank you for using so simple calling. Yeah, but we already have whatever 136 minutes, so that's not a big deal now anymore. Um, that's the only number I have. What for what 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 happens? What happens when? Uh, maybe maybe uh, maybe try calling him since we're on the way and be like, hey, we're on the way. And see if you still get the same shit. Maybe his phone's off for whatever reason. But the only thing I'm thinking of is like, I what happens when someone blocks your number? I like, don't know. I, I mean, he was so concerned about Whitworth. I don't know why you would have Whitworth's number blocked from a burner phone if they were in contact, but block each other's numbers and call each other as I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> see what happens. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try to block that number that called me. Then I'll call uh, Roderick's number. <laughs> sure, because uh, I'm gonna start getting confused on who the f is doing what. Uh, <laughs> I'm blocking Deacon. Whitworth's phone. No, 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 Deacon. Again, having an applicable. I'm doing com- this. <laughs> having an applicable computer science skill. Sure. That can definitely be used. That number that's saying it is that message that is saying it's disconnected has nothing to do with users or phones. That number is no longer in service from whoever assigned that number. Okay, so it's so on even if we if we were to call from your phone or anyone else's, it wouldn't go through. You it's can what, try, but what prob- you're saying. yeah, that that's what it sounds like he's saying. Between computer science and SIGINT and other skills you have, yeah. Winston's number has been disconnected. Well, that can't be a great thing. No. But so we little, can go to the voice on the bag phone said danger is near. So... Imminent. Say imminent. Did they say imminent danger. Whatever. Yeah. Anyways. So I'm a little concerned about this meeting now. Yeah. I mean, we could just go back to the hotel and sleep it off. <laughs> yeah. Let's just let's all just sleep in room six one six for the night. Nothing bad will happen. I mean, the last thing he did say is all of this will be over soon, which doesn't make me feel great. So I, yeah, I forgot your phone being still captured. I probably should have sent that to Troy because I think Troy talked to him on Troy's phone. I'm getting oh, very yeah. confused on who talked to whom at which point. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, so that probably did go to Troy. Do I find anything relevant in these files that I'm reading? Uh, you, I mean, yeah, if you got the. If you got a little light on it or beginning to read it, I mean, it's going to take you hours to consume this. Um, but I will read you kind of a major passage that seems important right on the front. Um, it would take passage? hours to break this apart. Um, it says, to start, GS Paris 41. Kein Intelligenswert. <laughs> X report DG 51 EM. After preliminary investigation by the Gestapo, the DB file was placed in storage in the General Questionable Repository at Le Maurice Hotel in the Rue Rivioli, later at the Chateau de Port, where it was recovered uh, by elements of the U.S. 4th Armored Division on 20 July 44. Subject is the play Le Roi en Jeune. Translation <laughs> enclosed. And you get a general sense. General sense. Uh, Ro- um, Roderick, that this appears to be a write-up of a write-up of a write-up with some source material and other things. It's going to take you some time to decipher it, but the earliest dates you are seeing is 1895. You're seeing dates from 1941. 1951 and 52 are incredibly prominent, and some of the stuff looks like fresh ink pen over the top of everything else. 
say the earl- earliest was 1895? Correct. That's the this... publication date for Chambers. Was it? Mm-hmm. It was before the 1900s? Yeah, yeah. it's old. Oh, I thought it, I thought it was it's in the 80s for old. some reason. No. Yeah. Um. So, again, it appears to be, and from what you can get, uh, Daniel, make me a roll. We'll see if you get this or not. Uh, let's make me a... Do I want to use that? What do I want to use? Uh, I would use anthropology, maybe. I'm trying to look if there's. I really need like a library use type role. Um, history. I take history too. Just need some studious nature of you. That is a fail. You're getting the sense that something happened in 1895 and some of the files originate in 1895, but that it's almost as if other people have analyzed that original file and just stapled their notes directly to this and have created a hodgepodge of files. You can figure it out, but you really need to spread everything out all over the table to kind of see. It's really hard to do this in a car. Like I said, there are newspaper clippings and photographs. It's hard to get a sense of timeline. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Especially in just... 30 minutes in the car but a couple of things you do note is that um like i said it definitely concerns something in french called the le roi en jeune um and there is actually a typed copy in the back le roi en jeune and there appears to be a newer typed copy um titled the king in yellow and it says on a translation yeah, okay. I mean this I mean it's just like the the Arsh Goisha. It's got different translations for different years and people who translated it, so it's just different copies throughout the years what it seems like, but uh yeah. But it began in French. French is the original? Is that the implication? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, yeah. It's... Like the thing is is that it's it's pieces of clearly it's it's uh, for lack of a better term I'll call it an intelligence report. Something occurred in 1895 or thereabouts that was documented that file was then passed along okay. and you can definitely make connections based on the german involved in it that probably the germans had their hands on this file at, or someone who wrote in german had their hands on it and then it was clearly taken care of again by the u.s fourth armored division 20 july 1944 and then there are Delta Green notes, 1951, attached to it as well. And then, like I said, some of it has fresh ink written on it. Um, so that takes care of that. That's kind of what you get. Anything else from anybody? Do I turn the car around or no? No. Good question. At this point, I will say that you've arrived at the uh, off-ramp to Uxbridge, Um you can see the Trevolino Mall. It is a two-story building. Um, uh, kind of like we talked about before when you saw the Google Earth, there are signs for like Radio Shack, Toys R Us. It definitely appears sort of decrepit. Um, so the mall is isolated in an area that looks like it is either undeve- under development or was under development at one time. It is the Worcester Providence Turnpike, MA-146. Um, Worcester. Uh, Worcester. Um, heavily trafficked runs past, um, but there is little else for kilometers in any direction except undeveloped marshland. Uh, the mall is currently unlit. You can sort of, in the twilight, see a a sign. It is three stories tall and topped by a large billboard. It reads Trevolino Mall um, next to a black and white image of a wide-eyed, old-looking mast mask. Um, the old store signs beneath it have long been removed. So it's like one of those big tall pillars, you know what I mean? And it's, so it says Trevolino Mall and kind of an arch with kind of this Harlequin-esque mask. Um, and then all the other signs that would have been underneath it, Old Navy, Coles, whatever, those have all long since removed. You see again, and again, like I said, there is a long drive that is gated off. So drive into the parking lot that's gated? Yes, it's gated off. Okay, so we can't access it? Uh, I mean, you could get out and try and open the gate. It just looks like it's one of those two pillars with a swinging bar that's like, hey, don't come through here. Okay. 
Um, through the headlights, do we see any other cars on the other side? To, uh, no. It is a, it's gated off very high up, um, and then it's a long drive to a nice open parking space. Okay. Um, literally, uh, everything that is, especially for, um, the military officer, everything about this screams you do not want to approach from the front. It seems very uncomfortable to do so. Like, it seems really, really shitty agenty to try and approach from the front. Okay. Because it's very, ob- you would be very obvious if you're not already approaching at night. That makes sense. How do you spell Trevolino? T R I V E L I N O. You can Google it. Would you like to tell everyone what you find, or do you want me to tell them? I was more just wanting to look for like a translation of what that means in some other language. It's Italian. Yeah. I believe that you will find it with other terms such as uh, Arlecchino and what is it? Bravissimo. It's been a long time since I studied Commedia del Art. Pretty sure Trivellino is a Commedia del Art term. Am I correct, Trey? I don't know. I literally was putting it in Google Translate. So. Oh. Yeah, it won't it won't translate. It is a it is an Italian specific word. I'm pretty sure it is um one of the classic characters of Commedia del Art. Um the fool, the lovers, the braggart soldier, um Is it is it the Italian term for Harlequin? That's Arlecchino. Tre- Trevolino. Similar similar to Arlecchino, like him, he represents a stupid servant or valet. Trevolino is also similar to Scapin, Brigella, or Mezzotin. The character was introduced in France by Domenzio Locatelli in the third quarter of the 17th century. So not to put my history hat on for everybody, but the Commedia del Art was a resurgence of um, Italian art during the Renaissance. Um, the idea was that these were archetypes. So the Trivellino may the name may change from play to play but the trivellino character was just the character who was this character the arlecchino was the harlequin character the lovers were static characters so you would write multiple stories but you would always have an arlecchino you would always have a trivellino you would always have a and so they were very stylistically written in that fashion i knew trivellino was one of the comedic characters and i knew it wasn't the arlecchino but i wasn't couldn't remember what it was so it is the foolish foppish or the foolish Servant, so dumb play, uh, the butt of the jokes, those types of characters. Butters from South Park. Butters is so good. You do not know how many times I have utilized um, <laughs> theatrical, um, classic theatrical tropes and archetypes via South Park. I actually wrote a paper on how Cartman and Ubu or Ubu. Cartman is the modern day Ubu Wa, um, which was a fantastic paper that I read. Um, him and his Pashit stick. Mm. Anyway, yeah. so there you go. Commedia del Art. Okay. Italian masks. Uh, that's the other thing I should say. Commedia del Art frequently did feature masks because, again, it was the Renaissance. It's a rebirth of the gr- ancient Greek ideas. Now, these were not the massive masks of the Korygos, these were smaller masquerade ball style masks, um, usually very prominent noses. Um, again, thinking of the Harlequin masks, uh, the Motley, this is where a lot of that stuff originates is with Commedia del Art. Okay, so we're trying to find a side entrance. You'd obviously try and go down the road and see, you, obviously they get deliveries to the back, so you could find a spot back there you could park in the marsh and walk for half a mile if you wanted to probably not that we could go check the back yeah we can do that delivery way okay uh you do find kind of a side road um it kind of dead ends in an awkward place but you can maneuver around the pillars by putting the rental car kind of on the side in the mud or whatever you can uh you can make it work um Need to check something. Uh, Grim, 
Mm. As they're sort of maneuvering around, you see um, you do see some individuals um, as you, as you kind of get closer. So you've kind of come up on the side of the mall. You can see that there is kind of a main entrance. Um, definitely this mall kind of in the way that it's shaped is um, hold on, let me find the map so I can kind of describe it. It's it's wide, but it definitely has like a main entrance. The idea is that this was a very, what do I want to say, 90 style mall where you would walk through a grand entrance and then the mall would go left and right. So there aren't, like you see in some modern malls today, entrances every 100 feet or whatever. It clearly has one main entrance. Okay. Um, uh, and Grim, as you're kind of seeing... Um, you kind of get, you kind of get, you guys kind of get the car parked and you kind of approach and there is sort of a border fence sort of keep out signs, you know, hazard, hazard radon, blah, 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 whatever. As you kind of approach that fence, you're able to see a few individuals moving in the parking lot. Um, uh, you see just a couple of, of individuals, um, in dark clothing moving, um, I don't want to say quickly because I feel like that gives you a run, but moving with purpose, you know what I mean? It's not a jaunt kind of around the edge of the building and into the front entrance. Um, you also see a child in a strange metallic outfit. Like following the people or no sort of separate alertness. Got it. Um, it appears to be uh, the child appears to be dancing, almost, and they're wearing what looks like a. I'm going to use the wrong term here, so I apologize. I'm not sure which is the correct term, because the burka is just the headdress, correct? The burka is not the entire outfit. And I think the burka is the is the, the burka outfit. the full outfit. The hijab is the... Oh, that's right. The hijab is the top. The burqa is the full outfit. This is a very full-length body suit, almost to the point of like a onesie. Um, This child is probably uh, bigger than my son, but not a lot. Maybe six, seven, you know, a couple feet tall. It's gold. They're wearing gold, and it's a very flowy, graduation-y gown, moo-moo... muslin type of thing and they're kind of just twirling and spinning you know how like little girls sometimes will spin and their dresses will puff open like you see this person kind of doing a few pirouettes and kind of putting their arms in the air and then you see them scamper off into the distance where's the light source there is almost no light you're it's it it's impressive that you saw any of this by starlight huh what, what way did they go uh, the, you saw a couple of individuals move into the mall, um, through the front entrance. Correct. The, the child in the onesie sort of twirled in place a few times, kind of hopscotch, did maybe some ballet leaps and then kind of just, I don't want to say vanishes, but just, it's so hard to see them at this distance. They don't seem to go anywhere as much as disappear. Hmm. Well, I will, I will say. Hey, um, just noticed two people dressed in, in black just disappear around the front. I didn't know um, Winston was bringing company, but... I don't think he was. I, I, don't, I don't think Winston's coming. I don't think so either. Okay. I pull out my... Let's go. It's a little excessive, don't you think? I just give you a... No, like I would have brought mine along too. Like, yeah, and no, this trip I brought mine too. Absolutely. But. So the unarmed person is going to say, "So <laughs> you hold the flashlight. <laughs> what? What is? What's happening? What's going on? It's an ambush. It's a drop. <laughs> so why are we going in? Uh, well, we got to step ahead. We know where they're at. Are we going to gain anything from this? I would though? ask the Are same gonna... question about going into the creepy room that came out of nowhere that you guys were insistent about going into. Because we know that we know that one of the people involved in this was in that room. And we found files. Mm. 
to, okay. We found this file that I'm going through. Sure. Oh, we heard a phone ring from the other side of the wall where a window should have been. Exactly. When my, we called it. Exactly my point. We want. We wouldn't have known this stuff if we didn't go in, though. You're making it, the the argument for no, yeah, for no, Inez. no. That comes back around to the question: Is are we going to gain anything from going in here and confronting these people? We know that answer as much as we did before going into the creepy. Room. No, but we we knew we knew going into six one six that Roger was staying in that room. Into the small, we're convinced that Winston isn't showing up. So why go in if there's nothing to gain? At least in at least in room six one six and in Marvis's house, we knew there would be potential information in there. What information are we going to gain from people ambushing us? We don't know, but obviously something has been set in motion here that we're into so like if we're not going to benefit from it I don't see why we go we don't in. know whether or not we're going to benefit from it so I mean but there's not even a potential to benefit from it what what are we going to gain what is there possible to gain from the situation where did it seem like those two were head were coming from um around the sides of the building maybe but like I guess I'm I'm having trouble figuring out like where we are in conjunction to the front of the building. Oh yeah, it's happening. It's time to draw some dicks. We got a football and a Chevy symbol. <laughs> Chevy, the sponsor of the NFL. <laughs> isn't that isn't that Coors? I don't know. Official beer? I don't know. They got so many sponsors. I don't remember anymore. So you guys came, kind of parked off to the side and came up. Hey, who said who said we're out of the car? You had oh. to walk up to the fence. <laughs> um, so, Flynn, you kind of saw a couple of people. Um, it looked like maybe they were up here next to the um, next to the entrance and just kind of move in. Okay. Um, the uh, the small child dancing was out here in the parking lot somewhere. Okay. Any cars in the lot? As I as far as I can tell. None. Okay. Well. I'm just the unarmed person with no actual program experience. Okay, so I'm got, going to. You got, you got fisty cuffs. I'm going to accede to my, my betters in this case. I mean, I feel like, I don't know. I thought we'd just leave. But where do we go? I mean, we're, we're still... We go back to his house and get some sleep. We we have we have Ophelia we can still call and ask about Whitworth. We have... Um, I mean, if this is an ambush and we leave, they're going to just track us down. What, what, so what how do, you, do we make sure that doesn't happen? Or if they were going to track us down, they probably already would have. Except they knew we were coming here. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I'm saying is is they knew we were coming here because we set something up. That doesn't mean they're going to be able to track us. Y- yeah, sure. Be not be that naive. If they're tracking my phone. They'll take them to the police station. They'll there annihilate we go. the police officers. They they'll justice. Get, they'll arrest themselves. Put the handcuffs ha. on themselves. Turn themselves in. <laughs> what do you guys want to do? I don't want to go in. It is. We're here, aren't we? Sam, I I I don't I I feel like it's okay to get a little bit more information and see if we can see anything, but I think just strolling in, well, may not we're not be just going to open the best. front door and you know they're not going to have a you know all the lights are going to turn on their welcoming party. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> um, it's now eleven o'clock. I'm just trying to figure out what we're going to gain from this. 
if there's nothing we can gain, then I don't see why we go in. But if there's something we can get from it, I mean, we don't know how many people are in there. We don't know if we're outnumbered. We don't know if... So it's 11 o'clock now. There's too many unknowns. Let's watch the parking lot and see if another car shows up. I doubt it's going to happen, but we can. Maybe he's running late. <laughs> Maybe he's dead. Who the f- knows? He's probably dead. Winston? That, that That's what I'm convinced at this point. Is he's dead. He's gone. He's or If he's not dead, he's not here. Whether it was him setting us up or someone got wind of it and intercepted this meeting. I, I uh, it's know. a possibility. I mean, we, we got an unknown uh, number sent the text, but I mean, it was very specific information that Winston would have known. Okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> let's go in. Let's, I mean, obviously not the front we'll door. We, we, we were past my heart out. So if we wanted to, if possible, um, Wait until next time to make our final decision That's and fine with act me. on it. Probably a good place to stop, but yeah. And then if things change, like said, if our hearts change, we don't next we don't week, want that our combat. <laughs> yeah, I'm like you sons of bitches are sneaking up on my hour of combat. Um, I think you guys might want to play for ten more minutes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, obviously, if we're gonna are you go going in, in, yes, we're not going through the front door though. Roderick said, F- it. Start, start climbing the fence or whatever he's got to do to get it, get past the fence. Uh, yeah, you can get, you can get past the fence. Okay. He's walking around the building looking for a back entrance. Um, there is a back entrance. Nice. It appears to, uh, be barricaded. With what? Um, from the other side, it's like they barred it and put roll cage the whole nine yards. <laughs> Is there a shipping department anywhere, maybe? Yeah. Like a like a, a dock? Overhead door, dock door? Yes, there is a dock door. It also appears to be closed. Is there a side door next to said dock door, like a metal no. door? <laughs> now what? Guess we're going in the front, then. God. <laughs> Are there any other doors around the sides? There are. They all have these sort of, like, roll cage they're clearly barred and barricaded some of them may even have like plywood on the inside screwing them shut there there's, are a couple there's no emergencies. like any light coming out like emergency inside? exits no. or like service doors like something that's not a not that you would consider a typical exit door you probably see some emergency exits but they're flat panels they're not doors so, like, yeah. somebody would hit a crash bar and would be able to go out, but it's not a way to come in. As we're circling, any any cars, any any place where the fence looks like it's been cut or... Not as far as you can tell. Okay. I open the front door. Okay. The doors swing open. I'm going to have my gun drawn. <laughs> Same. Sure. I'm going in last. <laughs> Flynn's going in last. Um, it's a two-story again. It looks like it. it's... Um, it's it's double deckered, right? And you've got a long um, hallway leading to a fountain, sort of in the middle. There's like an atrium. Surely the fountain's not running. <laughs> um. Uh. No, probably not. Um. Uh, ambient light um from the outside drops off into darkness. You can see um. The interior of the mall is dusty but unlocked. Footprints track in and out of the dust from the front door. Um, all the stores are empty and uh, signs have been removed. Some still have shelves and displays. But for the most part, the mall feels eerie as if um, shadowed everywhere. You can tell which one was the hot topic was it because it had that cool ass entrance in 2015. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to... I'm going to pull out my flashlight and gun and it's going to be, yeah, you know, police, the, yep, police, flat, police officer style gun thing. Sure. Uh, you begin sweeping, walking forward. Uh huh. Looking for, uh, people escalator, something to go up. Um, it just seems stairs, like man. the escalators, it seems like the escalators are in the 
are towards the central atrium, at least some of the signage that you can see. It looks like they made a big presentational fountain with a hallway. They want you to walk down that fucker you are to here. Get to the middle. Yeah. You get down to the middle and then it opens up. Escalators the whole nine yards. Um, Seems like poor design. <laughs> uh, as you all continue moving forward then? Yeah. Um, you get up to the central area um, where the fountain is. There's the distinct smell of chlorine, um, cleaning supplies, whatever. Um, and again, it, it, there's a cross section here. There's a um, sort of north, south, east, west, right? You're coming up one of the four cardinal directions. As you get closer to the fountain area, you can see um, that it opens up. So now you can look up into the upper floors, um, kind of like, uh, you know, those big grandiose malls. Um, you can kind of see up and see down. So people upstairs can look down and vice versa. Um, you, As you get into that sort of central area, um, you kind of look towards your left, look towards your light. Uh, you look straight ahead probably cause you're looking straight ahead. Right. And you go down about 10 feet, 15 feet past the fountain. And somebody has got a, there's a security gate, you know, slid across, no access down that hallway. Um, and as you move up a little bit forward, it looks like the other two avenues are also similarly closed left and right. Sitting ducks boys. Security gate can't be that hard to open. You got a key. Shoot the lock. <laughs> Pew, Flynn. Hello. Out of the corner of your eye, you catch a glimpse of gold. I look. In a small Starbucks or Hot Topic or whatever, you know, dipping Dots, there's a small spot on the corner there. And you see a full length, uh, a child... Um, completely covered head to toe in this gold um, fabric sort of sacheting. And as it sachets, it sort of turns and looks at you. Cool. <laughs> um, and it sort of notices you looking at uh, it notices you looking at it, at the child. And the child sort of like stops and kind of cocks its head sideways. And, and then it sort of cocks and looks its head up out into the atrium. And everybody else but Flynn needs to be silent. You see the child show you three fingers. And then with its other hand, it shows you three more fingers. And then you see it point upward towards the ceiling, towards the second story. To where it was looking? Mm-hmm. And then you see it make this motion. And it holds its hands out in sort of a rifle stance. And then it turns to look at you and goes with a single index finger over its face. <laughs> what would you like to do, Flynn? Who's near me? You. All of us, kind of. Are, are we all. You're close ish, yeah. I'm gonna grab the backs of the first two people and say, get down, and pull you back. Make me a strength by five roll. Make me a strength by three roll. No. No. Um, so you grab them by the collars and try to jerk Deacon and Roderick. Um, and as you do, you all catch a glint as you see um, four individuals, one at each cardinal direction, pop up over that wall. Um only visible from the chest up. They're completely concealing everything but their head and they point down um, with submachine guns and they open fire. Our title track and additional musical arrangements were provided by friend of the podcast, Ian Shannon. Find more of his work at sleepfortheweary.com. Like what you heard? Check out more episodes online at RancorsBrothel.com or the Rancors Brothel on Facebook. You can also interact with other listeners at the fans of the Rancors Brothel Facebook page. Want to contact us? Reach out to at Rancors underscore Brothel on Twitter or via email at the Rancors Brothel at gmail.com. Most of all, keep circulating the tapes. Much love, everyone. Yeah.